Welcome back, everyone. Um, this is this is Cambridge Inside Out, the one and only place for information, misinformation, and oh. whatever the hell you want. So. Disinformation, uh, yes. Actually, actually, I'm just joking because I actually think we probably do more on the information side than pretty much any source you're going to find in this town. I, I but, keep a folder of all the people, of all the anonymous emails I get from people who can just say like, "Thank you for saying that," and yeah, I didn't know that. Believe the folder is getting kind of big. Uh, I should I should put them all in a folder too because I get that <laughs> a lot as well. You know, uh, you know, in, in a in a town that's basically uh, you know does business in BS. Yep. Uh, just speaking a little directly and truthfully, um, you know, at least there are at least a few people who who without appreciate it without a paper of record. How is anybody going to find out what's going on in this crazy town? We got to find a way to create recreate a real paper record. That's yeah. a, that's a that's a separate matter. So, Patrick, um, yes, sir. There there is a um, there's this as we were just speaking of in the last half hour briefly. Yeah. Um, there was a petition, a zoning petition, came out of the city council, um, or from a few city councilors a few months ago that was calling for a pretty broad scale ban of what were just referred to as labs uh, yes. across the city, except in a few designated zones, right? So the, the language would prohibit labs in every use district with the exception, exception of the industry district, which there are very few. And it did something that people have been clamoring for, but I don't believe they've actually hit the mark. It's created a definition for what a lab is. Um, and it, it that definition uh, is really focused on the, the amount of air circulation going on in a building, uh, the kinds of HVAC equipment, um, and it's, in my opinion, overly broad. But this is what uh, Councillor Zondervan and McGovern brought in September. Now, now, subsequently, there was this other petition yes. that was, and uh, I forget, um, I guess it came in as a citizen petition, so it didn't have the, it didn't have the mark of the, the of Zorro on it. Well, right. so it didn't have the mark uh, of Zorro, but but it, but it did, you know, but our our hero did allude to this petition in his own rant about having his about having the first councilor petition sent to committee. So right. whether he's yeah. Nostradamus or you know has a had a hand in it, you know. Well, I mean, the the principal person who was moving it around for the signatures was his city council aide. That's so true. The way I look at it, this is a city council petition. If in fact you're using your city employee to yes. carry it out, it's simple. I don't I think agree. there's even any doubt about it. Nope. Okay. So, um, so, but now that one is that will be uh, subject to its own hearing Correct. in January, right? But the the initial and and that one at least it made some rather pathetic effort at trying to um, in a rather curious way define labs in in, yeah. in a well, more it, specifically the, the language is mostly the same. There's hardly too much nuance to it. But the preamble and some of the language sort of explaining the intent of the petition was mostly that you know labs labs are being built everywhere, Robert, and it's terrible. And they're taking up valuable buildings that could be affordable housing buildings, which is a pretty wild assumption. So in a way, the petition that was filed by this grassroots uprising of real citizens who really care about Cambridge. Better um, known as Our Revolution, Quentin Zondervan and Dan Totten. Better known as just a bunch of children who are a huge pain in the ass. But the, um, the, the, the pretext of it is that in the absence of a lab, housing will spring up. And they're fra they're framing it like a pro housing petition without any without putting anything in it that is pro housing. So that's that, that's kind of where that is, right? So anyway, that so that will come, but hopefully, um, since councilors Toner and Carlone are playing the role of the adults in the room mm. for the hearing that's coming up tomorrow on the the initial petition, right? We'll see what what it brings. But uh, so, but Robert, I have a lot of curiosities about this. I, I I claim no great expertise on even the definition of a lab in a Cambridge context, or what that really means, and what the repercussions. But perhaps you can elucidate 
a bit. So under- I've been thinking a lot about this for a long time, especially as in, in, in terms of Central Square, where I focus most of my attentions. And, you know, the first thing that came to my mind is like, what's a lab? It's almost like a poem. Like, I don't like, you know, what is what what constitutes a lab? And in in Central Square, I was thinking, well, we don't have any labs in Central Square. So we're probably, you know, not in danger of getting any any new labs. And then I started doing some research, Robert. And guess what I found out? Tell me, won't you? We found we have a ton of labs in Central Square um, and they've been here for a long time. And a lab can be anything from high foods, which produces low carb, protein rich fungi flour. That's happening in Central Square right now. To what an unspeakable horror to have that in our midst. To a lab called Osmosis that is decarbonizing gas separations to eliminate one gigaton of carbon emissions per year. So, so obviously, a Councillor Nolan and Zondervan, with their tremendous concerns about climate change, would be fully supportive of the continued presence of entities just like this in Central Square, don't but, you think? Wait, Robert, there's more. Did there you is? know, you mentioned COVID earlier. Did you know that BioBot, the com- the, the starred company that rose to sort of the uh, to fame and infamy through the COVID uh, pandemic as the wastewater testing company that everyone ran to, to find uh, traces of COVID in our sewer system, is in fact on Mass Ave in, in Central Square. Central Square? Oh my oh, Lord. Oh, Biobot. Honestly, <laughs> I want to put a sign up that if you're, if you're a fan of the farmer's market, you know that our sign for the farmer's market is about that big. You can't read the text and it's only on one side of the sign. It's one of the most embarrassing signs in the history, but let's replace that with Central Square, home of Biobot. Wow. There we go. That's a little it. bit of hometown pride. That's right. That's right. But wait. There's even more, Robert. No, that, that's not possible. How could there possibly be more? There are over 50 labs in Central Square. Stingigi Plasmonics, which I know I'm pronouncing that first part wrong. Chemical manufacturing. Wasn't there a band by- called the Plasmonics? I want to be in Oh, that no, band. it was the Plasmatics. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> a chemical manufacturing driven by light to enable cheaper, scalable on-site production. All I can think is the Green Lantern lives there and he's got that ring and he's turning th- he's turning light into stuff. But wow. You know, I'm, um, I'm mindful of the fact that there was uh, uh, some research activity that was, again, spun off coming out of MIT people uh, that was going to use um, essentially like uh, algae, sort of like as a, sort of a, a biological component uh, in the development of better batteries. Now, you know, one of the big bugaboos about electric vehicles is they got these big nasty batteries, which are themselves have an environmental impact that cannot simply be chucked off. You know, it's pretty significant. You know, would, now wouldn't it be great if, if some lab out of Central Square, you know, were to be behind a, a revolution in batteries for electric vehicles? Gosh, we, we would, we would, um, well, we would, like, we, we would love to drive, drive out that initiative, wouldn't we? Well, Commonwealth Fusion Systems may have an answer for you because they've been creating safe, unlimited carbon-free fusion power, looking to incre- increase grid capacity for uh, in the next 10 to 15 years. So, you know, I, I mean, that was always a dream. I would hear about you know, fusion. And then I actually have heard like there is a horizon that that might be feasible within a decade. We're, 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 get, we're getting closer, but the point of what I'm trying to say here is this petition drafted by people who clearly have no idea what's currently happening in Central Square, most likely Harvard Square, Porter Square, and any of the places this touches, doesn't have a appreciation or any sense of purpose for what's really going on in this city. And these labs have been here for 10, in some cases, 20 years. There's another lab down the street uh that handles uh it provides sterilization services there's another cancer therapy uh lab just down the street on mass Ave, close to almost touching city hall you would never know in a million years but the you read the petition language and you would think that a lab is coming robert and it's a big one and it's coming right. for your children it's coming for your children's children and it's going to steal your houses and it's a bunch of bullshit 
So I use that word limiting uh, sparingly, at least on this television show, oftentimes on the street quite a bit. But the point I'm trying to make is this petition is like walking up to Beethoven in the middle of a concert, smashing his piano to pieces and give him a wiffle ball bat and say, please continue. It is anti-science, anti-intellectualism and anti-Cambridge. And that's I have to cool. agree. I have to agree completely. Yeah. I have, I have a renewed, I, I, I know and having been to a few meetings in North Cambridge, I've been reminded that I'm a usurper. I wasn't born here. My ancestor didn't come from here. Um, I stole land to be here, um, but actually I bought it from a person who maybe they stole it. I don't know. I didn't ask, but uh, I feel a sense of pride, a deep welling sense of pride. I'm in a place surrounded by people who are changing the world for the better in ways I didn't even think were possible. And here, and here I am walking around like an ignoramus, uh, you know, building a hotel and, you know, playing drums in a band at, at the Middle East. Well, this stuff is happening across the street. It's amazing. It's amazing. It is, it is, it is incredibly amazing and, uh, and a prideful thing. It really if, is. And we if, should if embrace the, it. If the, we should embrace it. And what, I, what I'm getting, I get this feeling from like, hearing the language of this petition that either people didn't know this or there's a deep, real resentment for the growth and the, the true industry of Cambridge, which is intellectual brain power. And that creating a definition for a lab in a place like Cambridge is a fool's errand. Because after having gone through this minor research on just skimming the surface of what's here, there are things that defy categories of uses or blend in categories of uses in ways that zoning cannot resolve for and shouldn't. You know, we oftentimes talk in zoning, Robert, about things like, let's, let's focus on things we don't want versus, versus focusing on things that we do. So we don't sort of cloud that brain space by limiting the next thing that comes out. And the next thing that comes out clearly is coming from friggin' Central Square. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's actually reminiscent of the, even in the recycling industry, when they talk about materials recovery, they talk about positive sort and negative sort. Positive sort is where you pick out the good stuff from the lines for recycling and let the, everything else go over the edge into the into the dumpster. You know, and the negative sort is everything that goes through is going to get recycled, except we pull out the contaminants, right? You know, I think sometimes we have more of a negative view, you know, sort but, of, of how, it, how to actually plan things, you know. I'm also, I, and, I, and this is a point that I was making prior to this exploration of, the, of uh, what we actually do have in terms of lab assets in Central Square, but how many times have we heard from the council or uh, counselor, like what Central Square can't be? And it's, right. and, I, and I know I'm focusing on the Central Square portion of this, but I am sick and tired. I've been to five meetings the last week about all the central things that Central Square needs to do more of in terms of providing for uh, the unhoused, providing for people who have addiction issues, making sure that we, as individual property owners, have to pay more money to clean up the streets because of the impacts of this intensity of use in our district. And here we are again being told, now, we don't want biobot there. We want housing, because in the absence of biobot, housing is going to really just spring up when the zoning hasn't changed at all for housing. You can't well, build housing in Central Square without a massive rezoning. It's just yeah, not possible. So so two things I'll say to this. One is that to me, the notion that banning labs equates to the miraculous development of housing is stupid. It, it, it's not based on fact, it's nope. stupid. Yep. Um, but the other thing I'll say here is, has something to do with nuance, which is that I think you can make a case that there can be negative consequences of some laboratory uses. Sure. I mean, I remember one person living on Green Street who was concerned about the endless whining sound of exhaust, exhaust equipment, roof type equipment. So rather than actually address the problematic aspects that can happen with certain lab uses, instead, a bunch of nitwits come in and say, let's ban labs. Now, that's to me idiotic. But, you know, in a way, it's... It's also the same kind of lack of nuance I see in other matters. You know, when somebody comes in and say, well, we've, we've hatched up a, a proposal for 
for the development of high um, high density, unlimited height, affordable housing, you know, which happened at a city council meeting a few weeks ago. And then, you know, the truth of the matter is there are a lot of people, including me, who'd be pretty okay with thoughtful increases of density in, in ways that make a lot of sense and which are actually can be reasonably acceptable with people, whatever. But it's sort of like, no, 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 let's not get into the weeds. Let's just drop a bomb. You know, well, that's, just, you that, know that's, is, that, is that the way we do business? Let's just drop a bomb. We live in a post-fact time. And counselors like Zondervan in particular, who I've mentioned many times, is very comfortable in misleading his masses. He's very comfortable taking a group like the DSA or any other group that's willing to listen to him and to focus them, focus their attention on a high level, zero nuance point and have them attack. So tomorrow at this meeting in the Sullivan Chamber at 1 p.m., you're probably going to hear from a handful of folks who are going to say, don't candleize Central Square, bro. And it's going to be friggin' nonsense because they don't know anything that's going on in Central Square. They don't contribute to anything that's happening in Central Square. And they certainly aren't bringing any pro-housing initiatives to Central Square, other than, I guess, your very, you know, this is a petition that you, I mean, you were a big fan of the AHO petition and you were an even bigger fan of the amendment to the AHO. We all know this, Robert, but. <laughs> he said facetiously. <laughs> but like, that's that's where their heads are at right now. And to me, um, you know, once you get a little, even if you don't even have to look that hard to find it, I didn't, and, I, and I'm just building my list right now, but like, we should be embracing this and celebrating it, you know, in any other place in the world, any one of these 50 companies would be cause for, uh, you know, if I, my hometown's Marblehead, like, you know, say Marblehead, home of Biobot. Like, right. that's how that's how big it is. And to us, we just dismiss it and say, nah, we're good. We don't want that. Right. That's, that, that is insane. You know, I, I, I do remember probably 20 years ago when Ken Reeves was on the council, and not just Ken, but quite a few others, they were inclined to celebrate the good things that were happening out of places like Kendall Square in the in the day, you know. I mean, maybe a little too optimistically, you know. He says, "I think we may actually cancer will be cured within a decade." Well, that didn't quite work out, but yeah, but a lot of improvements have happened. If it's going to be cured, Robert, it has a good chance of being cured here too. You I, know? I think that's exactly right, you know, and and I think people should at least start with the acknowledgement of all the good that actually happens around here. But you know, another thing I'll say here is it's sort of there's almost a, you know, back, back in like back when I was a hippie. <laughs> Sorry, you Patrick. When you were a hippie. When I, you're a hippie. I think nah, you, I don't know. The, I don't still think the status they're... remains. <laughs> well, I I guess since most of the people who would probably characterize me as either being or not being a hippie or too young to know what a hippie actually was back then. Fair enough. Um, but I did go to anti-war rallies in Washington, D.C. in 1971 and 72. And, you know, and I, w I understood sort of movement, you know, it's like movement politics. But I got to say, you know, I'm going to speak quite generally now, is that there came a point in my life where I started to detest movements because I think movements are fundamentally stupid. They tend to be mass, you know, just basically like herding cattle, you know, um, you know, sometimes they may be all, all the best, uh, the best idea behind a movement too, you know, I mean, if you're, you have a movement for peace, I go, yeah, I agree with peace. That's a great idea, yeah. you know, but, but, you know, you can advocate for many things in this world, but if you, if, if all you really want to do is to be part of a club and part of a movement you know, with your people, man, you know, and we're going to go to the aid, we go to the rally, man, you know, then you've already kind of lost. I always it. thought that's just where you hippies picked up chicks. Uh, well, you know, uh, that's <laughs> kind of true. You know, I've always, I've never hidden from the fact that, you know, back in the, a lot of the anti-war rallies and, and <laughs> be-ins were really about, you know, beautiful women and, and peasant blouses but and I'll say uh, I'll some say intoxicants. Right there's something for going to a rally uh, against war and for peace and for bigger issues that are global. There's quite another thing that I see more and more now where we, we scrape away all the nuance, we reduce things to a binary good versus evil. And, you know, this is done particularly with the counselor who brought this. And, 
if you look at the work these companies are doing and what they're contributing to the general, to the community itself, he's the one that I would have to say is probably on the side of the not so good. And where the the me and the the problem that I see is we have eight other counselors, you know, and it's unfortunate that McGovern signed on to this. I think he wishes he didn't, but we have eight other counselors who could stand up. And I think Paul Toner is doing this. I think Denise Simmons is to a certain degree, but the rest of them are not. And I like to I like to see the mayor stand up and say, "What? Well, wait a second, ban labs in Cambridge? What are you crazy? Like this? This is what." Look at our tax base. Look at look at all the good that's come from these from these things. And you know, people talk about the golden era of Cambridge as if it was, you know, 1970 through 1995. And I'm sorry to say, but like Cambridge, Cambridge has a lot more to go, and it's still in its golden era. It's just changing. It's evolving, and part of that evolution are these companies. Right. So, and, I, and you know, and I've lived through late 70s, 1980s, 1990s, and so on here. And I can point to certain aspects of life in Cambridge during each of those periods that I thought was great. I can also point to things during each of those areas that I thought sucked, you know? <laughs> and, you know, so the notion that, you know, we're either we're in the golden era or let's right. look back to the golden era is kind of ridiculous. You know, I mean, I can, I can certainly say that the, some of the gentrification that comes with the, a lot of the, the high tech industry, you know, people coming in here and the displacement, okay, that's an issue. I think let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. But but let's not just let's not just tell somebody who's with some life sciences company get the hell out of town. We don't like your kind. But that's you that's know? where I get really frustrated, and people sort of mischaracterize me as just an angry dude, where I'm not in the, in the slightest. Is that there's an intellectual inconsistency amongst the council, amongst city staff, that they don't thread the needle between all of these different things. Whether you're talking about lab bans, embodied carbon, whether you're talking about housing whether you're talking about linkage, whether you're talking about zoning, it's all the same thing. It's all connected. So if you don't think of them holistically, you're not solving any problem. And in fact, you're creating huge, huge issues. You know, when we had the linkage discussion, we talked about how the, uh, the methodology for linkage focused more on restaurants and entertainment uses as having a more disparate impact on housing than these very labs that we're talking about. And you and I both know that that's nonsense. But then the council will go on the other side of that argument and then say, well, we need to ban this, ban that, not realizing that those very uses pay all their bills, pay the so, linkage. I, I, I often feel, and this is actually true, not only in the city level, but the state level and federal level as well. You know, this sort of like policy is driven by the need to put out the tweet or the press release. Mm -hmm. You know, this says, hey, look what we did. Aren't we wonderful? And it doesn't matter whether what you actually did was good or bad or could have been better or maybe should have been rethought. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as I can get the damn tweet out, you know, I'm good. Well, you know for a fact, certain, if this were to pass, which it will not, but there'll be a council says, we banned labs in Cambridge. And then, you know, five days later you go, well, wait a second. Uh, this one place was curing cancer, um, sir. I, I we, we should we should rethink that one. <laughs> um, right, exactly. Or, or yeah. you know, there's a there's a company in, in Central Square that's looking at creating efficient, low cost steel and alloys for zero emission buildings. Actually, you were mentioning to me earlier one about uh, uh, alternate ways of producing cement or concrete or whatever. Yes, you know? and I'm and I'm intrigued by that one because I think a lot of people understand that the uh, the environmental uh, cost in terms of greenhouse gas emissions in terms of concrete production is actually one of the nastiest of all. Yep. So, and we've got research going on in and around Central Square to these, find these, alternatives. These companies are not just in Central Square, they're on Mass Ave in the core of Central Square. And I think the misconception, and, and, and Boston did a study on this. They looked at all their, you know, their large uh, commercial buildings because of the pandemic, because of work at home. How can we repurpose these buildings to residential use? And I think Gensler was the company they used to make this, to put the study together and they determined like something under 15% of those buildings could be reasonably be converted. Those conversion costs are massive. They're just not going to happen. But like, if you look at like the Santander Bank on Mass Ave, 515, right? That's an empty office building. The, it's a giant building. It could never be converted to residential because of the core of the building and the floor plates. It should be, 
a place where we solve the world's problems. Because in the absence of that, it'll be nothing. So I think there's like lots of good examples if you get down on the, on the floor and look at it. But I, I can't imagine anyone who draft this petition thought like that. Right. Well, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> you got to think more broadly, right? Yes. You know, uh, and, and I also think we have to think more positively in the sense yes. that, you know, in terms of um, what do you want? For example, yeah. if, 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 uh, if the Democratic Socialists of America wanted to bring in a, a, a petition demanding um, uh, entertainment venues for children so that people could play pinball and people could, you know, go bowling or people could just have fun whatever i'd say you know hey I, maybe i'll become a damn socialist you know maybe I'm a you socialist guys are making now. sense finally right if socialists started bowling now i'd start to i'd start to think about things but like right. that's not what they're doing and i no. think and, and, and i i'm on board with you know i i'm generally not I'm, I'm generally an optimistic person i like celebrating our wins and we have so many that we just ignore and i and i the, the more i'm learning about this the more i'm i'm you know, I always tell my wife every once in a while, I'm like, can we get the hell out of here? These, these hippies are driving me crazy. I, I, I look at this and I'm like, damn it, this, this, is, this was the right move for us. No, it's, I can't it's believe great. we're around these people. It's great to be close. It's actually, some of them can be my neighbors. Some of them are, I, are my neighbors. I feel neighbors. a sense of town pride, Bob. I feel yeah. a sense of town pride. You know, but you'll never be a true Canterbridgean, Patrick. I know. I know. You know I nor know. will I. Nor will I. But, it, <laughs> but, you know, the next best thing is to be an adopted Canterbridgean. Yeah. So, so we got to just talk to some of the natives and say, we're, we're okay. We're, we're okay. All right. Anyway, we're just about out of time here. We've got about less than 20 seconds to go here. So anyway, um, so everybody in Cambridge, please pay attention. There are charters being reviewed. There are bands being promoted. And I think you need to treat yourself to some learning about it all. So see you soon on Cambridge Inside Out. <laughs>